morning. Happy Sunday. Uh, in the news today, uh, April 19th, or April 18th, I should say, there was an announcement that uh, every citizen of Japan who has a mailing address and uh, yeah, lives in Japan, has my number, or is a Japanese citizen, will get 100,000 yen. Awesome. Um, unfortunately, uh, some people were expecting to get 300,000 yen per household, but that no longer applies because uh, if, well, you live alone, yeah, it would only be 100,000 for you. However, if there are three people in your house, say uh, mother, father, and a uh, small child, yeah, that would be 300,000 yen for that household. But I'm not here to talk about the updates of the coronavirus. I am here to talk about something that was written a long, long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. <clears throat> Today, I'm going to read the first book in the trilogy of William Shakespeare's Star Wars. The first one, Verily, A New Hope, is what I'll be reading from today. Uh, if it all goes well, uh, I will read The Empire Striketh Back. And if people are in need of a sequel, it will be The Jedi Doth Return. Hello there, Medieval Iron Man. Okay. <clears throat> so I plan to only read Act 1 of this book. Uh, so those of you hoping to encounter Obi-Wan or Ben Kenobi, that will not be today. On the first page we have the Dramatis Personae, for example. Luke Skywalker, a boy of Tatooine, Owen Lars, his uncle, Eru Lars, his aunt, Obi-Wan Kenobi, a Jedi Knight, Princess Leia Organa of Alderaan, Han Solo, a smuggler, Chewbacca, a Wookiee, and Han's first mate, Darth Vader, a Sith Lord, Governor Tarkin of the Imperial Army, C-3PO, a droid, R2-D2, his companion, Jabba the Hutt, a boss, Greedo, his bounty hunter, Wedge Antilles, a rebel pilot, Biggs, Dark Lighter, a rebel pilot, and various other small parts. So something about the voices. Uh, I'm going to do my best to read as I imagine them to sound in my head. I know the case is that if um, you hear a sound in your head, it's much different from the sound that you actually make coming out of your mouth hole. So you're just going to have to bear with me, and I hope that what you bear is still pretty entertaining and enjoyable. Okay? Um, <clears throat> right. For the chorus voice, um, I'm going to use the, uh, the trumpeting narration that came in the uh, Clone Wars uh, CGI animated series. Um, when it's stage directions, I will try to use my ASMR voice so as not to distract. And uh, I will not mention each time uh, a character speaks his part in time, I hope that it will be understood by the voice changes I make that I am speaking the parts of each character. Um, I have no props, I have no masks, so if you want, you can just turn this uh, screen off or maybe uh, look away from the screen and just listen to the voice and imagine this as a radio play on a budget. <clears throat> All right. William Shakespeare's Star Wars, Verily, A New Hope. Act One. It is a period of civil war. 
The spaceships of the rebels, striking swift from base unseen, have gained a victory over the cruel galactic empire now adrift. Amidst the battle, rebel spies prevailed and stole the plans to a space station vast, whose powerful beams will later be unveiled and crush a planet. Tis the Death Star Blast. Pursued by agents sinister and cold, now Princess Leia to her home doth flee, delivering plans and a new hope they hold of bringing freedom to the galaxy. In time so long ago begins our play, in star-crossed galaxy far, far away. Exit. Scene one, aboard the rebel ship. Enter C-3PO and R2-D2. Now is the summer of our happiness, made winter by this sudden fierce attack. Our ship is under siege, I know not how. Oh, hast thou heard? The main reactor fails. We shall most surely be destroyed by this. I'll warrant madness lies herein. Beep, 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 squeak, beep, 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 wee. We're doomed. The princess shall... Have no escape this time. I fear this battle doth portend the end of the rebellion. Oh, what misery! Exit C-3PO and R2-D2. Now watch, amazed as swiftly through the door, the army of the Empire flieth in, and as the troopers through the passage pour, they murder several dozen rebel men. Fighting begins. Enter rebels, many die. Enter stormtroopers. Enter R2-D2 with Princess Leia and C-3PO as across the stage. Pray, R2-D2, where art thou? Exit Princess Leia. Beep, beep. At last, where hast thou been? I fear they come in this direction. Pray, what shall we do? My circuitry overloads, my mind's overthrown, and fear hath put its grip into my wires. We shall be sent unto that place I dread, the Kessel Spice Mines, whence no droid returns, and there be blasted into who knows what. R2 D2 begins to exit. Anon, anon, R2, where dost thou go? O oh, prithee, patience, leave me not alone. I, even though I mock and injure thee, I'll surely die if ever thou leavest me. Exit droids. Scene two, aboard the rebel ship. Enter Darth Vader, carrying rebel leader one by the neck and stormtroopers. The Death Star plans we could not find herein, nor are they on the main computer, Lord. In short, they are not here, and there's an end. Thou speakest well, my stormtrooper, and yet not well upon my ear the message falls. I turn to thee, thou rebel. I, I lift thy head above my own. Thou canst now choose to keep thy secrets locked safe in that head, and therefore lose the life thou holdest dear, or else to keep thy head and thus thy life. My patience runneth quickly out much like the sands across the dunes of Tatooine. So tell me, else thou diest quick, where shall we find transmissions thou didst intercept? Thou hast thou done? What hast thou done? Say, with those plans. Darth Vader begins to choke the rebel leader one. My lord, my head and life I value. Certain tis, yet to thee I must report we have not intercepted one transmission. Ah, this is a consular ship and nothing more on diplomatic mission. Ah. Thou knave. With thy last breath, hear thou this word. If this is but a consular ship, when there, then where is the ambassador? Rebel leader one dies. Commander, prithee thee, go. Rend thou this ship apart until the plans are found, and bring me any passengers upon thy life. I want them brought alive. Exit stormtroopers. And so another dies by my own hand. This hand, which now encased in blackness is. Oh, that the fingers of this wretched hand had not the pain of suffering ever known. 
but now my path is joined unto the dark and wicked men whose hands and fingers move to crush their foes are now my company so shall my fingers ever undertake to do more evil i and this my hand shall do the emperor's bidding evermore and thus we see how fingers presage death and hands become the instruments of fate exit darth vader enter stormtroopers searching prince enter princess leia holding a blaster aye there's one my comrade set for stun Princess Leia shoots. Stormtrooper storm one dies. Stormtrooper stun Princess Leia. She shall be well. Go now and inform the dread Lord Vader. We have caught a prisoner. And may Moss Eisley drinks flow swift and free. When Vader grants rewards for work well done. Exit Stormtroopers with Princess Leia. Enter C-3PO R2-D2 as the latter escape pod. Hold! Thou art not permitted to go in. Deactivated thou shalt surely be. Beep, 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 beep. Thou shalt not label me a mindless brute philosopher. Nay, nay, thou overladen glob of grease, thou imp, thou rubbish buckets fit for scrap, thou blue and silver pile of bantha dung. Now come, and get thee hence away, lest someone sees. Beep, 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 squeak, beep, 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 wee. What secret mission, and what plans? What dost thou talk about? I'll surely not get in. <sniffs> I won't, I'll regret this. So say I. Exit C-3PO into escape pod. R2-D2 speaks. This golden draught has been a friend, tis true, and yet I wish to still his prating tongue. An imp he calleth me? I'll be revenged, and merry pranks a plenty I shall play upon this pompous droid C-3PO. Yet not in language shall my pranks be done, around both humans and the droids I must be seen to make such errand beeps and squeaks that they shall think me simple. Truly, though, although this with sounds oblique I speak to them, I clearly see how I shall play my part, and how a vast rebellion shall succeed by wit and wisdom of a simple droid. Exit R2-D2 into escape pod. Now climb the metal pair into the pod, which shooteth from the ship like laser blast. And to the planet's face, as straight as rod, the capsule takes the droids by power vast. Enter Chief Pilot and Captain. There strays another one. Pray hold thy fire, for certain there are no life forms aboard. And truly, what may be the chance that aught by life alone could fly within that pod, the rebels could not be so cunning bold to put the Death Star plans therein. If I were one to bet, I'd stake my life on it. All's well that endeth well, so say the wise, and so that pod shall live to land below. Exit Chief Pilot and Captain. Enter droids, aside in escape pod. "'Tis but a jest, I surely. We are mocked. For R2-D2 plainly canst thou see the damage looks but minor from below. Can thou be sure this pod is safe? Beep. Oh. Scene 3. Aboard the rebel ship. Enter Darth Vader and stormtroopers with Princess Leia. Darth Vader, only thou couldst be so bold. When my first ship was under siege, I knew twas thee who had this piece of vessel sacked. The Imperial Senate shall not stand for this, for when they hear thou hast attacked a ship on diplomatic mission, Highness, peace! Be thou not so surprised, for well thou knowst the mercy mission this was not this time. Thine innocent appearance both disguise a heart with revolution at its core. I several transmissions were there beamed unto the ship by rebel spies. I want to know what happened to the plans they sent. And prithee, speak thou well, or speak thy last, for fairer next than thine my hand hath crushed. Thine idle threat 
is meaningless to me. My neck, my tongue, my mouth, these instruments of speech have not the power to relate the knowledge that thou seekest. For certain tis I know nothing of what thou ask of me, for I am but a member of the great imperial senate bound for Alderaan on mission diplomatic. Nay, thou liest, for thou art with the rebel alliance vile and worse a traitor. Take this one away. Exit stormtroopers with Princess Leia. The blood and wires within me leap with fire, when all these traitorous words I must endure. Lord, holding her is dangerous. If word of this is told, then sympathy may rise for the rebellion in the Senate's mind. So shall our power over all the universe be weakened by this wicked, cunning wretch. Tis like the tale my mother told me once of bygone emperor whose reign was lost, when putrid Ugnots rose against his throne, so hath my mother said, and I with her, a deathly blow oft comes from tiny fist, and greatest tree may fall by smallest axe. Commander, peace, and trouble not thy mind with tales of old. The princess shall reveal her treachery when all's to do is done. The rebel spies are aptly traced to her, and now is she my only link to find the hidden rebel base. I'll wager she will die, she tells thee. Leave that to me. Now go, be on thy way, and take this task. Send thou a signal of distress, and then inform the Senate all aboard were killed. So shall our presence here be hid from sight, and thus our swift attack shall not be known. Enter, Captain. Lord Vader, sorry I am I to report, there are no battle plans aboard this ship, and neither were transmissions made. There was but one escape pod jettisoned amid the fighting, but no life forms were aboard. For certain, twas a harmless accident. With purpose rank must she have quickly hid the plans in the escape pod. Woman vile! However could she deceive my subtle mind? The plans in the escape pod? Oh, most rare! Pray, cease thy speech, and mark ye what I say. Take thou a keen and swift attachment down, and bring me back the plans. Commander, go. See to the task thyself before the chime. There shall be none to stop our plan this time. Exit. Desert planet Tatooine. And now, dear viewers, shall our play go to a planet stark and drear for our next scene? Imagine sand and rocks within thy view. Prepare thy souls, we fly to Tatooine. Enter C-3PO and R2-D2. Forsooth, how did we get into this mess? I tell thee verily, I know not how. A thousand tauntaun balls could not produce a greater desecration than this place. Alas, we too are made for suffering, I fear, are too. Tis but our lot in life. More than six million forms of speech I know, yet not a one shall help me now. Beep, beep. Now must I rest before I come apart. My joints are nearly frozen. I, I freeze, for tis as though the vicious cold of death hath sunken deep into my circuitry. Oh, what a desolate terrain, terrain this is. R2 begins to depart. Beep, beep, beep. Beep, 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 beep. Where dost thou think thou goest? Beep, beep, beep. Now I shall leave this. Now I shall leave his company a while, be like my absence, shall alleviate his obstinate resolve and teach him thoughts of kindness, care, and good humility. Well, I shall not go thither with thee, droid. Tis far too rocky. Canst thou not perceive? Nay, truly, for the sun upon thy cold and hard exterior hath surely warped thine often prudent mind. Pray, understand, the road herein is better far. Why dost thou think that settlements will be found yon. Beep, beep. Be thou not technical with me, or else thine impulse thou may swift receive a hearty helping of my golden foot. Beep, squeak. What mission? What dost thou speak of? Squeak, squeak, beep. More of thee I shall not take, so go thou hence. 
thou shalt malfunction ere the day is through, near sighted pile of scrap. Now mayest thou travel hence upon thy way, and find thy mission on a salak pit. In a salak pit, then shalt thou know for lo these thousand years the pain I suffer as thy counterpart. And be thou not behind me, errant knave. I mark me, follow not, nor seek thou help, for thou no satisfaction shalt receive. Beep, beep, beep. Beep, 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 squeak, squeak, squeak. No more with thine adventures. I go not upon thy way. R2D2 exits. Malfunctioning small fool. Tis all his fault. He tricked me so that I should go this way. But he shall not fare well. O oh, gods above, why have I once again been short with R2, sending him away? I trust he knoweth well I hold him dear though in his presence oft my speech is cruel. Tis words that do betray my better self, when harshly they express my droidly rage, and yet for protocol I made, and must with words fulfil my task. So then tis true, that words are both my ruin and my strength. And yet, although I find myself adrift, and lost within a speechless sea of sand, this word is true if ever words will have truth. Forever lost I'd be should I lose him. But wait, what's that? A transport. Save them I. Hark, over here. Hey, nothing on. Please help. C-3PO exits. A vast, a vessel vast comes forth across the sand and takes C-3PO within its hold. But what of R2-D2's mission grand? How doth the tale of this small droid unfold? Enter R D two D two and Jawas hidden. Beep woo, beep 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 squeak. Pesca mama, te pesca mama, fregile ha. Woo, beep beep squeak, beep beep beep. Jawas stun R two D two who falls. A teeny. Jawas carry R two D two into transport. Imagine now that on this stage you see full many droids and creatures quite bizarre. And yet amid this ghastly company, herein the two friends reunited are. Enter other droids and C-3PO. Good R2. R2-D2, oh, tis thee. Beep, beep, beep. <whistles> Squeak. Beep, 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 weep. Exit. Scene 5. The Desert Planet Tatooine. Enter Stormtroopers 3 and 4. There was someone within this pod indeed. The tracks go off in this direction, see? Behold here, sir. Either someone large hath dropped his ring, or else this fragile circle here doth mean we have found droids on Tatooine. Exit Stormtroopers. Enter Jawas with droids, including C-3PO and R2-D2. At last this vehicle of death hath stopped. So greatly fear I what shall happen next, that I am shaken to my core within. They say that fear is better fact faced when two together stand. Thus swift shall I awake, my dear R2. Wake up! Wake up! Beep! Squeak! We're doomed! Dost thou think they shall melt us down? Me pony tinder ting, utini, be. Shoot not. Oh, shall this torment never end? First captured by these jowers, small and vile, and now we face a fate that is unknown. Now seems the first rate better than the next. Now seems the first fate better than the next. I rather would I bear the ill I have than fly to others that I know not of. Enter Owen Lars and Luke Skywalker, with Beru Lars, aside in Larm's homestead. Anon, let us go. O oh, Luke, O oh, Luke, pray tell thine uncle that if he should find a translator, be sure it's Bocce speaks. Aside. Tis true, the last time Owen bought a droid, more dud than droid were purchased in the deal. It seemeth we have little choice, dear aunt, and yet shall I remind him what thou sayest? Exit Peru into Lara's homestead. <sighs> Again it falls to me, a simple man, 
to take a leading role in matters grave. For I must choose a droid today, tis true, but also must I teach this lad, this Luke, to learn and grow and to become a man. Although when I was young, I too had dreams of far off stars and distant galaxies. I learned to work the land, to raise the crops, and thus shall I my trade pass on to him. Adopted son of mine, and strangely dear, I had not asked for fate to bring a son to me, for I had thought to have no heir. Yet do Baru and I feel for this child a measure of affection, and as well the burden of responsibility to Jawa too. Pray, tell me, Jawa small, what hast today? Nay, not that one. These Jawas offer first the lowliest tis ever in their nature to deceive. To see through you. Droid, I assume that thou art programmed well for etiquette and protocol, tis true? I protocol, my primary function tis. I'm well versed in all the customs, sir. No need have I of droids with protocol. Not in this habitat thou speakest true. Hath ever sand a need of protocol? When did a stone or rock need etiquette? However, I am also made... Peace. When I needs a droid who knows the binary tongue of moisture evaporators. Oh, but sir, my first employment was in programming. A binary load, a lifter, very like thy evaporators. I, in the in most respects. Aside, my service and my worth, I'll prove to him, if I must speak a thousand hours more. For certain I shall die ere I return once more to be in rank captivity. Well, speakest thou, Bocce? Truly, sir, tis like a second tongue unto my soul. Pray cease to Jawas, so shall I have this one here. Praise the day. Now if he chooseth... Oh, sorry, our C-3PO is speaking. Praise the day. Now if he chooses also my R2, I then shall I be pleased. I mean, man. Luke, take thou these droids unto our vast garage. My wish it is they clean be ere we dine. But on Tatashi Station would I go, and there obtain some power converters. Fie! Thou canst go with thy friends another time, when all thy chores have been fulfilled. Go to! <sighs> oh, shall I be mocked and verily abused? when my noble comrades hear that once again my uncle hath denied my fervent wish to be with them instead tis well come hither thou too red beep, boop. go hence beep, squeak, beep, beep. Squeak, beep, beep, beep. if i go not with him my foolishness shall render no one service thus i beep Wallaby. Ah! R5-D4 begins to smoke and fail. Pray, Uncle Owen, look! Behold! This R2 unit hath a foul and smoking mo motivator! Hmm. Vicious knave, saying, What manner dost thou try upon our goodly wills to ply thy thievery? So shall I rip thy brown and ragged robes to shreds, if thou set not this matter right. Now speak! Mm Beep, squeak! Your pardon, sir, the R2 unit, which thou seest, is in prime condition. Aye, a bargain tis. We shall serve thee well. Now, if I can convince the human here to purchase R2, too, along with me, so shall I win the day, and ever shall yon R2-D2 dwell in peace with me. What shall he answer? Uncle Owen, say, hast thou considered yonder blue droid there? What of that blue one? What of that blue one? That one shall be ours. Oh, victory! Next I'll praise him for his choice. A noble choice thou makest, master, for thou surely shalt be pleased with this new droid. I can with confidence report to thee that he is in first-class condition, sir, for I have worked with him before. He comes. Beep, 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 squeak. Anon, away we go. Exit Luke, Owen, Jowers, and droids. Forget thou not this moment, faithful droid. Why I should put my neck at risk for thee is quite beyond my mind's capacity. 
exit. Scene six, inside the loop, sorry, inside the Lars homestead. Enter Luke Skywalker, C-3PO, and R2-D2. All praise be to the maker, verily, this oily bath much healing shall provide. The glow of bright Coruscant doth not match the vital warmth this soothing oil brings me. The case of dust contamination which befalls me mighty as renders me unable, I'll be sworn to move at all. I rue the day I came onto this place, this drab and barren rock called Tatooine. But wherefore have I reason to complain? Do sandstorms not invade both rich and poor? We are not promised equity in life. Both rich and poor alike pertain to me. For certain, thou in though in toil am I most rich, by want of keen adventure am I poor. Thus I declare that whether rich or poor, the lot I have received from fates unfair. My comrade Biggs hath rightly guessed, I fear, that never shall I leave this stricken place. Oh, exclamation tragic, shall I speak? Is there, my dear sir, aught I might do to help? Nay, droid, lest thou canst alter time, or make the harvest come apace, or goodly friend, if thou canst somehow bear my body hence by magical conveyance yet unknown. I think not, sir, for merely droid am I and have not knowledge of such things as thou, not on this planet anyway. In truth, I do not know which planet this one be. Hm. Well, if centres bright the universe contains, then surely, Droid, hast thou now found thyself as far from it as thou canst possibly be. I see, sir. Surely thou mayst call me Luke. I see, Sir Luke. <laughs> thou jolly Droid, just Luke. This droid, I see, is wont to prattle on. Belike his mouth is faster than his mind. Luke begins to clean R2-D2. C-3PO am I, an expert in the human cyborg link, and he, my short blue counterpart, is R2-D2 called. Good even. Yep, squeak. Thou hast much carbon here. It seemest much of fortune thou hast known. I... Can it be that two such droids as you can know more of adventure than a man? With all we've been through, amazed am I, we yet our good condition keep, what with rebellion and its hurly-burly ways. Nay, can it be? The very thing of which I would no more thou hast experienced? Pray, knowest thou of the rebellion against the Empire droid? For certain, I, tis how we came to be in thine employment, if thou comprehend my simple meaning, sir. Now is his visage turned all eagerness. Oh, never in this manner have I seen a man intoxicated with a dream. And hast thou been in many battles? Speak! Whatever morsel thou mayst serve to me shall be a feast unto my waiting ear. The smallest tale of battle, lost or won, shall feed my soul, never-ending appetite. Oh, full many battles I, sir, but I fear I have but little food to fill thy heart. A banquet, sadly, I cannot prepare. Tis certain that of tales I am no chef. But rather, I confess that not much more than an interpreter am I, and not much good at telling stories. Verily... I've not the salt or spice to season them. <sighs> Tis well, my droid, so shall my hunger wait to feast one day upon another's tale. To R2-D2. My little bot, thou hast got something jammed herein. Hast thou been on a cruiser or... <clears throat> Enter Princess Leia, in beam projected by R2. Oh, help me, Obi-Wan Kenobi, help. Thou art mine, only hope. Pray, what is this? Squeak? What is what? A question hath he asked. Say, what is that? Oh, help me, Obi-Wan Kenobi, help. Thou art mine only hope. Oh, help me, Obi-Wan Kenobi, help. Thou art mine only hope. Beep, 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 woo. Squeak, beep, 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 beep. He says tis nothing, sir. A mere malfunction, bygone date it is. 
please pay no mind. But who is she? For she is far more beautiful than all the stars. I truly do not know, sir. I suspect she was a passenger on our last trip, a person of importance, I believe. First was adventure, second tis this lass. Tis certain my new master hath a wealth of passion, ever eager to bestow. Say, is there any more recording droid? Squeak me. Behave thyself, R2, for thou shalt get us both in trouble. Be content, and trust him true. He is our master now. Beep, 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 meep, beep, squeak, meep, beep, squeak, whoo. He saith he doth belong to Obi-Wan, Kenobi, residence of parts nearby, and tis a private message meant for him. For all my wit, I know not what he means, for our last master, Sir Antilles, was. Alas, with all we have endured this year, small R2 unit, quite eccentric is. Squeak! Obi-Wan Kenobi. I suspect old Ben Kenobi hath, he doth mean, perhaps. First droids, then tales of battles fought in space, and now a damsel cries in beams of light. Did ever destiny come knocking thus? <sighs> I beg thy pardon, sir, but knowest thou aught of what he speaks? I know not any man named Obi-Wan Kenobi, yet old Ben resides beyond the Dune Sea, and there dwells much like a hermit, strange and lone. Oh, help me, Obi-Wan Kenobi, help, thou art mine only hope. I wonder who she is. Whoever she may be, whatever is her cause, I shall unto her please respond. Not even were she my sister could I know a duty of more weight than I feel now. It seems she's shown she some dreadful trouble hath. Mayhap I should replay the message whole. Meep squeak, squeak, meep whoo, meep. R2 doth say he, the bolt restraining him short circuited his full recording system. So saith he that if thou wouldst with speed remove the bolt, he may full recording then display. What purpose shall I serve unto this man? Am I to guide, encourage, counsel? What? Thus shall I play the wise interpreter, for truly tis the part I know best. What? Aye, thou seemest too small to run away. If I should take this off, good little droid, so cleverly thou bringest messages, that thou hast won my trust. Now, <clears throat> thou art free. Exit Princess Leia from Beam. But wait, where has she gone? What villainy? How hast thou dampened the celestial light wherein she spoke of late? Now bring her back. Play back the message full. Thou naughty droid. Meep, meep, meep. What message? Errant droid. The one thou hast been playing which thou holdst within thy rusty innards. Oh, alas, we shall deactivated be. Oh, Luke, pray, Luke. Oh, I shall be there anon, good Aunt Beru. I am sorry, sir, for it doth seem he hath acquired a minor flutter. Thus she comes and thus she goes, yet ever on my sight her beautiful fine countenance shall shine. So here's my vow. I'll see her once again, in beam or hope on hope, with my own eyes. For now, I must depart to dine. Pray, say, if thou canst remedy this art to droid, exit, Luke. Woo. Reconsider thou, if thou shalt play the message back for him. Beep, beep, boop, wee. Nay, I do not believe he liketh thee. Beep squeak. Nay, thee I like not either. Ooh. Exit C-3PO. Now speak, R2-D2. Now are the pieces all arranged for me to make a daring move and fly this place. The fool who sets the game in motion shall appear unto C-3PO and Luke no more than if he were an errant knave. But hear the voice of R2-D to all. My noble purpose I'll accomplish yet, to take to Obi-Wan the princess news, 
to take my master Luke away from here, and in the end, perhaps more vital still, to make connection twixt the two good men, a foolish thing this flight may seem to thee, and yet more fine than foolish shall it be. Excellent. Scene 7. Inside the Lars homestead. Enter Owen Lars, Baru Lars, and Luke Skywalker, eating at a table. Mine uncle, thou shouldst know my mind. Methinks the R2 unit we have bought belike may have been stolen. The thievery hath ever been part and parcel of the Jawa's trade, but in thine utterance I sense there is more so say, young Luke. Why thinkest thou thereon? Good uncle. Well, I know the Jawa's tricks, yet, as thou sayest, I mean something more. A stolen moment with those droids has shown to me a reason they may stolen be. I did uncover a recording whilst I cleaned the R2 unit. He purports to be the property of someone known as Obi-Wan Kenobi. Thus thought I that he may stolen be. As to the name, this Obi-Wan Kenobi, wondered I, if mayhap he meant Ben? Canst thou make sense? Nay. Yet I wonder if this Obi-Wan, perchance, may be some kin to yonder Ben. Oh, fie, fie! Shall that old man now haunt my home? That wizard is a damned scurvy man. Tomorrow shalt thou take the R2 droid to Anchorhead and have its memory erased, and so shall there an end be to it, for it belongeth only now to us. Ay, yet... What if this Obi-Wan appears and lays his claim unto the R2 droid? What stolen may be worth the looking for? The looking shall not happen, nor the find. For I believe the man doth not exist. Now shall I, by a lie, destroy a man, lest he be given new life in Luke's young mind? The boy a keen imagination hath. This Obi-Wan hath not for ages walked within this universe. He is no more. Twas many moons ago the old man died. Aye, truly he hath met his end about the time so long ago when wars were fought, the time when men did battle to the grave. The time before the Empire ruled supreme, the time wherein thy father died as well. Knew he my father? Though I tell of men and wars and battles brave, still, as he hears, is that word father. Prithee, Luke, forget thy task is to prepare the droids for work tomorrow. In the morning shall they be upon the south ridge, laboring with those condensers. I and I believe these droids shall serve us well. In troth, good uncle. Now I must confess my mind is moved to think upon the fact twixt thee and me, and our agreement, namely, that I shall stay here another season. Crops that grow in these harsh climes will surely grow sans me, and so, mine uncle, if these droids will satisfy, I wish my application to transmit unto the great academy this year. Nay, Luke, an uncle's heart is breaking. Canst thou mean the next semester, hence, before the harvest time? Just so, quite plentiful are droids. But harvest time I need thee most. Wilt thou here in the desert yet desert? Tis only one more season. This year I shall make enough at harvest time to hire more hands to help. Then canst thou go next year, to the academy. To pilot is a noble trade, my boy, but family is nobler still. I prithee, understand. I need thee, Luke. Tis one more entire year. Tis only one more season. I so saidst. Thou, though, when my dear friends beg and tank did leave, now cracks a hopeful heart when by the land a man's ambition firmly grounded are so shall a bird never learn to fly or soar when wings are clipped by crops and roots and soil 
pray, whither fliest thou, Luke? It seems, dear aunt, I nowhere go, nor flee, nor sail, nor fly. Instead, I must remain and clean those droids. Exit Luke. Oh, Owen, he cannot abide for I with us. Tis true, his friends are mostly gone. It hath great meaning for our well-loved Luke. This bird would surely fly. So promise I that I shall set all things right, Baru. The bird shall fly indeed when time is right, and when the nest hath no more need of him. But, Owen, he hath not a farmer's heart. This apple falls quite near his father's tree. Tis true, and this, my dear, is what I fear. Exit Owen and Baru. Re enter Luke, gazing unto the setting of two Tatooine suns. Oh, am I fortune's fool? Tis true, tis true, and gazing now upon the double sun of my home Tatooine, I know full well that elsewhere lies my destiny. Not here. Although my uncle's will is that I say, I stay, my heart within me bursts to think on it, for out among the spheres I wish to roam, adventure and rebellion stir my blood. Those oft-repeated words of my mate Biggs, I do believe, that all the world's a star. Beyond that heavenly light, I shall fly far. Exit. And that's the end of Act One. In my next attempt at reading will be Act Two of William Shakespeare's Star Wars by Ian Dorsher. Dorsher. Dorsher? Dorsher. Verily, a new hope. Um, I hope that was of some pleasure to you guys. Uh, it's what I'm doing to pass the time. Maybe you two want to share some dramatic reading of one of your favorite books. I've had these books for quite some time, but never had I the chance to read them aloud until this very day. And so to all of you, I bid you all adieu. Danik exunt.